uh, welcome you all to this session of uh, technologist and I'm very privileged and I'm thankful to the organizing committee for having me here for a speech and uh, my topic for today is panic findings in radiology it is a very vast topic and cannot be covered in 10 minutes but I've uh, tried to cover the main objectives so let's move on uh, before we uh, uh, move on I would like everyone to uh, join um, uh, your uh, connect to the internet Wi-Fi uh, can you just uh, uh, scroll on your mobile phones for the Wi-Fi uh, labeled as health Asia level 2 and then uh, the password is health 321 try to log on uh, your Wi-Fi so that you know we will having uh, we'll be having some quiz in between Health is a small letter. Health, three, two, one. <coughs> so I have uh, no disclosures to make for this presentation. And uh, so uh, the layout will be, we'll be talking about the main objectives of the uh, presentation and the list of critical radiology results, which is important to identify. Uh, few cases we'll discuss in between and the quiz will be there as well. So whenever you are imaging a patient, whether it is uh, a plain radiograph, a CT or an MRI, there are some findings, very important or critical findings which should be communicated immediately to the primary physician. It can be your radiologist as well. So the purpose of doing this is basically twofold. Number one, you can save a life. It can be a life-threatening condition. Number two, it can change the uh, management drastically like it can change the management 360 degrees so your input is very important and you have to act fast so this is a list of critical findings it can be tension pneumothorax so I have taken all those findings which are related to chest and CVS so it can be tension pneumothorax it can be significant line and tube misplacement it can be pulmonary embolism mediastinal emphysema aortic dissection and ruptured aneurysm or impending rupture. So here you can see uh, this is uh, uh, a chest radiograph in which uh, you can see uh, there is a large uh, hyperlucency in the right hemithorax and the underlying lung is collapsed and there is also shift of mediastinum to the left side and the diaphragm is depressed. So this is very alarming because the mediastinum is shifting towards the contralateral side and there is a lot of mass effect or pressure on the heart and the major cardiac vessels. So it, this, this can lead to circulatory collapse and ultimately cardiorespiratory arrest. So you have to identify this finding when you are doing a quality control or looking at the radiograph. Uh, Sorry, I need to skip on the online presentation because uh, this is the presentation. Okay, to join the quiz, you need to uh, uh, type menti.com and then enter the code. I hope everyone is con connected to internet. You have to type menti.com and then enter the code. So waiting for the players to join in.
waiting for another 5 seconds. And please stay connected. You can see the entire presentation on your phone and you can zoom in and zoom out for the images, right? So if you stay connected, you can see the entire presentation on your phone as well. Okay, so the um, uh, Wi-Fi is Health Asia Level 2 and the password is Health, all small letters, 321. This is the quest, I think I have already discussed this, but you can see the images on your phone and you can answer the multiple choice question given to you on the phone. Don't look at the screen, look into your phone. So here we have the answer. So nine of the people think that it is right and Eight still think it is left. <laughs> so we've just uh, discussed this uh, radiograph. So this is the leaderboard and uh, okay, Fazal is leading the board. Let's move on. So we've already discussed this. I asked uh, this quiz like which side is abnormal. Of course the right side is abnormal. So you need to identify and let the uh, physician know. So what is the uh, management for this uh, critical finding. Decompression. With what? How will you decompress? From the radiographer. Chest tube. Very good. So, just to explain it further, the very important thing is mediastinal shift, as it is highlighted in the pink. <laughs> then there is depression of the right hemidiaphragm. And then there is hyperlucency in the right hemithorax with widening of the intercostal spaces. There is also collapse of the underlying lung. So this patient, uh, the finding was communicated and a chest tube was placed and now you can see there is significant reduction in the amount of free air. And now the diaphragms are at the same level, same level. there is no depression of the diaphragm and uh, of course there is some post-surgical subcutaneous emphysema on the right side. So another quiz. <coughs> so you have to look at your phones. What is the abnormality? You can zoom in the picture as well. Okay, great. So nine of you think that is pleural effusion and four of you think it's hydroneumothorax. So let's see. The correct answer is hydroneumothorax. But how? Let me see. I'll explain you. So here we are looking at, again, a very hyperlucent lung over here. And then we can see a air fluid level with, some, with complete collapse of the lung over here. This is heart. There is subtle mid midline shift and we do not see the costophrenic angle. So whenever the free air is with a fluid level, it is called hydroneumothorax. Like there is fluid as well as air within the pleural cavity. And only when there is no uh, pneumothorax but you see some meniscus sign. Meniscus sign is like this. It makes a meniscus. So that is a pleural effusion. But if you see a fluid level, then it is a hydroneumothorax. So this is how you differentiate. Another example, post-traumatic patient, here you can see there is a fluid level and definitely you can see the visceral pleura over here and this is making a hydroneumothorax. This you can confirm on your lateral radiograph. So definitely it is having an air fluid level. It is not showing any meniscus sign. It is not going along the pleura. So how this is how it distributes air tends to rise right because it is very light so in, in erect position it will rise in the apices 
while while the patient is lying down in the supine position the most non dependent portion is the anterior and the inferior portion so this is here where you want to look at free air while you are acquiring a supine radiograph mostly we are doing work in a hospital setup when you are doing uh, patients in icu so you can't have an erect radiograph so uh, the the detection rate or the sensitivity of an erect radiograph to diagnose pneumothorax is 92% while that of a supine is only 50% so you have to be extra vigilant to look at cases with supine uh, radiographs so here is a very important sign we should which you should look at uh, when uh, uh, a supine radiograph is acquired the hyperlucency seen in the left lower lung zone with some depression of the diaphragm and a deep sulcus sign the lateral costophrenic angle is very deep compared to the right side so this is uh, an alarming sign and you should be thinking of a pneumothorax so how you want to confirm this you are not sure anything else you want to do as a radiographer right left and lateral excellent theek hai why right right lateral and not left lateral exactly so you want to put up the left side so that the air rises in the non dependent portion another example right sided pneumothorax with a chest tube in place and here you can see that there is a deep sulcus sign the lateral costophrenic angle is very deep another example which which side is abnormal you can look at your phones as well uh, you have the screens at the uh, back as well who how many say right left how many say bilateral it's bilateral so here you can see this this is visceral pleura on both sides and there is bilateral pneumothorax and the deep sulcus sign is seen bilaterally so neonatal pneumothorax is also very important because it is life threatening and uh, with increased morbidity and mortality and uh, uh, it is very crucial in the first 3 days of life because if it occurs you have to identify that so neonates are in supine position you cannot change their position so this is the first day of life in which you can see this is almost a normal radiograph and their sulcus sensitivity over here not so significant but the next morning what we see there is there is increased hyperlucency in the right lung field and there is also shift of mediastinum can you see the hyperinflation of the right lung and some shift of mediastinum so this is alarming it means that so there is something going on and a pneumothorax has developed so how to confirm this on a neonatal we perform a horizontal beam lateral radiograph so here the air has risen up and you can see free air this is how the pneumothorax will look on a ct on a ct this is the atelectatic lung and this is the hyperlucent air within the pleural cavity so coming to pulmonary embolism how many of you are doing ct pa in routine practice raise your hand ct pa only few of them okay okay we have only few uh, uh, who are doing ctpa so it is very whenever we uh, the query is of that of a pulmonary embolism like any thrombus which has stuck into the pulmonary uh, uh, trunk or main bronchus or distal branches that may lead to sudden shortness of breath and again cardiopulmonary arrest or pulmonary infarction for that purpose we do ctpa we inject contrast and then contrast <coughs> is outlining the main pulmonary trunk and the left and the right main bronchus so here we see some filling defect in the right main bronchus which is indicative of a large thrombus so you need to inform this immediately to the primary team so that urgent medical or surgical intervention could be done another example here this is a coronal view here you can see there is a large filling defect in the left main bronchus and some saddle shaped thrombus in the right side so this is a saddle shaped thrombus and it this needs to be uh, critically uh, informed urgently informed this is an example of a misplaced ett 
normally in ICU patients we they are intubated and uh, uh, you have to look at the insertion site of the endotracheal tube so normally in a neutral position it should be 5 cm above the carina in flex position it is 3 cm above the carina and in extended view it is 7 cm above the carina so in this case the ETT has been placed in the right main bronchus that's why the right lung is aerated however the left lung is collapsed so there is there is no aeration on the left side because there is misplaced endotracheal tube. It should be at least uh, five centimeter away above from carina and at the level of clavicles. If you want to have a quick view, always look at the clavicles. The tip should be at the level of the clavicles. So this is a schematic view showing you that this is the carina. Ideally, it should be here at the level of clavicle, but this has been misplaced into the right main bronchus. So we need to inform the physician so that they can. Uh, readjust it. So this is the last quiz. You can look at your phone and zoom in. So uh, based on the tissue, what support device is malpositioned and what complication has occurred? You have four options. All right, so uh, most of them are right. So endotracheal tube has been placed again in the left and there is left low vetilic places. So the final leaderboard is I think puzzle and metal have a tie. So we can have a clap for them. <laughs> no, puzzle is uh, leading I suppose. And Rab Nawaz Baloj is the runner up clap for him please okay so another important uh, line is a nasogastric tube which is commonly placed and it can coil within the endotracheal tube or it can go into the trachea or bronchus so it is very important to identify in this picture uh, image you can see that there is coiling of the uh, nasogastric tube or feeding tube into the esophagus and the tip is at the thoracic inlet so if the patient uh, the nurse feeds the patient then the patient might aspirate and may have a cardiac arrest so it is very very crucial to important uh, identify that this is a schematic diagram and in this the uh, nasogastric tube is going all the way from the right bronchus into the right lung so it means you are feeding the lung rather than stomach so the take home first is that it is very important to identify all these life threatening conditions and to report them immediately without any delay so that uh, life can be saved and successful implementation of critical result reporting requires good knowledge of uh, your clinical context you should know the policies the departmental policies and act according it to it and show strong engagement with the stakeholders and uh, we can also use uh, uh, smartly these mobile phones and e-messages for critical uh, message conveyance and institutions and departments and all the health caregivers are requested to uh, conduct quality surveys to improve patient safety. So just rate the session on a scale of 10. So excellent is 10. So we can skip this. So this forum is open for questions, you can write your questions and I can get back to you later on and these were my references. Thank you.